Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're gonna to be have fun taking our first steps into cables.gl. If you're unfamiliar with cables, it's a really cool web platform and framework for creating interactive immersive web experiences that really resembles a touch designer workflow. So it's all based on nodes, wires, and kind of connecting up little pieces of functionality to make even bigger and more complex pieces of functionality. So today we're going to be making this fully web based kaleidoscope effect that's feeding off of our webcam over here, all with just a few nodes. And the cool thing about this is because it's web based, it's going to work on mobile devices on just about anybody's computer. And in this case, it's a public link that folks can go to see this example and even play around with this patch. Now, if you haven't seen cables GL before, First, I highly recommend you go to their website, which is cables.gl. Very good URL, I gotta say. that uh, All the prize money for the URL, cables.gl. And it is a really, really cool platform. It's not just a kind of toy trinket just for some simple effects. There are people making really complex, high-end experiences inside a cable, all of which can either be shared directly from the cable site or even embedded into your own custom website or web page very easily. So I highly recommend checking out what some folks are doing with Cables GL. Uh, if you come to their website, they have a whole area that has people who are sharing their patches as well as even a gallery for some people's commercial projects who they're sharing kind of what they made. So once you go ahead and make an account, and I have my account here, we're gonna go ahead to create and we're gonna create an empty project. Now, before we dive into that, just to give you a sense of how quick and easy it is to make this whole kaleidoscope effect that I have here, here's kind of the node graph for it. It's really only about five nodes to get from webcam input, kaleidoscope effect, drawing on screen, and it really is a quick and easy process. So if we go back inside of our new project, the first thing that every cables project is gonna need is a main loop. Now, if you're coming from a touch designer mindset, we don't really have a main loop because the touch designer engine is just constantly chugging away, outputting frames, and touch designer itself is in charge of making sure that all the operators that are needed for the output are kind of getting triggered and cooked and updated if their results are needed for the final output. Now. Cables functions a little bit more similarly to something like Max, um, where you are actually in charge of making sure you're sending some kind of signal, uh, like a bang in the case of Max uh, MSP, or in this case, we're gonna make our main loop, which is gonna create a trigger that's on every frame, and that's gonna tell the operators, and specifically which operators should update and when they should update. So if you've never used cables before, which to be honest was me about an hour ago, and this is really just to also highlight how quick and easy it is to jump into cables. We'll be doing a lot more cable stuff in the future as well. We can right click and drag inside the left area, which is kind of our network editor. In the top right, we have our viewer. The bottom right is where our parameters are gonna be, and that's why I got kicked out from being in the bottom right corner, and I feel very exposed in the middle of the screen right now. We have this settings area in the top left, and you'll often see a lot of hotkeys and helper things appear across the bottom. So we can dive right in. First thing we're gonna do is click inside of our network, hit escape, that's gonna open up our operator creation dialog or kind of area where you can create our operators. Let's go ahead, type main, and we're gonna see this main loop here, and we're gonna add that to our project. Now the main loop itself, as we can see, has a bunch of parameters in the bottom right for setting things like FPS limits, behavior on how it should behave if the window isn't in focus or it's loading. For our really simple example, I almost don't need to touch any of this. All I need is that functionality that the main loop is going to trigger everything every frame. Now one of the really nice things about cables.gl2 is how quick and easy it is to hop into the documentation for any kind of node or operator. So for example, I have this main loop selected here. I could just come over inside of the parameters, click view documentation. That's gonna quickly take me to another page. It's gonna tell me about what this operator does, what kind of inputs it has, what kind of outputs it has. So really, really great system they've got here. So now that I've got this main loop, we're gonna see a bunch of different colors and palettes for the different types of inputs and outputs. We're not gonna get into all of them today, but a couple that are very good to know about if you see this yellow color, this seems to be kind of the trigger color, so that kind of bang or load bang effect from Max MSP. Or if you think about it from the touch designer standpoint, it's basically the trigger that tells operators to cook. 
So those are always going to be our kind of yellow um, outputs, inputs, and cables. These green values seem to represent our numbers, so we're going to play probably not so much with those today, but maybe in future patches that we're going to build. So we essentially have our main loop. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape again, open up our operation creation dialog. And the really great thing I like about this op creation dialog is anything you type in, it does a pretty good job of searching the whole library of nodes and trying to give you things that might be relevant. So for example, I know I want to make a webcam effect. I find those to be pretty fun to make. I can go ahead and type webcam and I can see across different families of operators, I have a webcam texture, which is probably the one we're going to use because it says use your webcam web camera as a texture. But you can also see different things like tracking positions of specific colors, face tracking, uh, pose tracking, pose detection. So even just by typing that word webcam, we kind of get an idea of what might be possible with a webcam in general. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this webcam texture, add that into my project here. And I can see it has a little input here where it says trigger for render. So I can go ahead and grab my main loop output here, connect that to the input. And I'm going to go ahead and have that triggering every frame. Now, one of the nice things about cables that I find is it has a, a little preview viewer right up here in the top right of your network editor that'll generally just show you whatever the output of a specific operator is. So in this case, if I hover over my webcam texture here and in its parameters down here, I'm going to go to the webcam input and I'm going to change that to be my integrated camera on my laptop because my other camera is being used over here. We can see that just by clicking on this operator, and in this case, we don't have other operators yet. We can even just see a little preview of what the texture is here. Now, again, just for our simple example, we almost don't really need to play with the rest of the parameters, but just to get a sense of it, you can see that there's a lot of interesting things here, resolutions, flipping, generating textures or not. And the nice thing is you can actually even see the values of the output little plugs down here inside of the parameters so that I know if I was going to grab this number ratio 1.778, I can also even in the parameters see that the output value for that is 1.777 till the end of time. So this is kind of like a nice little thing that Cables does for us. So now that I have this webcam texture, we can see a lot more different colors of inputs and outputs on this node. So we talked about these yellow nodes and wires and uh, inputs and outputs being the triggers. We also have these purple ones, which are kind of similar to the top colors from Touch Designer. In this case, these are going to be our raw textures, so our 2D textures. We saw our numbers, which are these green ones, our arrays, and it seems like more complex kind of data structures are going to be inside of these light blue ones. And then we have strings, which are these red ones. Now for today's purposes, don't worry, we're going to keep it real simple. We're basically just using our triggers to make sure operators are cooking and we're going to be pulling some textures around. So the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to use a node called an image compose and an image compose basically functions like a composite top, but inside of this GL texture or context, I should say, not texture. And it's really good to know that all of this cables GL system really functions with WebGL, which is why it's so portable that it can work on basically any kind of desktop in most browsers on mobile on tablets, all that good stuff. So this is going to play an important piece in understanding what happens next, because we have our webcam texture, but we now need to apply an effect to this webcam texture and then send that resulting texture to our screen. So the top right area is our screen and we still haven't sent anything to it yet. So before we jump too far ahead of myself, the first thing I'm going to do is on my main loop, also pull down this wire of a trigger, pull it down here to my image compose, just to make sure that image compose is executing every frame. I can take a look at this image composes parameters and I can see things for setting texture sizes, doing things like setting how the texture should be filtering, whether it's nearest mip map linear. Again, for our simple example, we don't even have to worry about it. Now, the one thing I need to do for this image compose is actually give it some kind of input image or input texture in this case. Now, what I can do is from my webcam texture, I can grab this second output here, which is the object light purple color texture, and I can put that into the second input of my image compose. 
So now my image compose has access to my webcam texture. And what we're going to do is use some other nodes to apply effects to this image compose output, which we're then going to feed over to our screen. So in this case, what we can do, which is a fun thing, is open up our op creation window here with escape. And you can even type in something as simple as effect. And you're just going to see a whole list of all different kinds of effects that are available and ship just right with the standard kind of cables GL setup. Now, in this case, when I was just scrolling through, I saw a little kaleidoscope effect. and I thought, you know what? Kaleidoscopes are always fun, quick, easy. Everybody loves it. So I'm going to go ahead and add this kaleidoscope node. And this is where there's an interesting way that cables works that Max MSP and Touch Designer work in a little bit of a different way. So if we were thinking about this inside of a kind of Touch Designer context inside of a Max MSP context, we always think about nodes process data and then they send their full output down their cable to the next node, which processes the data, sends it down to the next node. And this is actually more similar to how Notch might function in terms of working with effects and effect nodes. So in this case, when I trigger the image compose to run the kaleidoscope, it's going to apply the kaleidoscope. But when I want to pull the result of this, I'm not going to pull it from the kaleidoscope. I'm going to pull the output of my image compose. And they actually have a really great video on the website for Cables Yield that talks a little bit about this in more detail. But a great way you can think about it, and especially this is going to become a thing when we start working on more complicated patches, is that a lot of the time the things like the image composes or other uh, rendering kind of uh, hierarchies, we're going to have one node that's kind of the parent of that hierarchy. Underneath it, it's going to have a bunch of steps of processing or rendering. And then we're going to pull from the parent the result of everything underneath. So in this case, the image compose would take whatever texture is coming into it. The kaleidoscope would be applied to that. If I added something underneath it, like maybe another kaleidoscope or another effect, that would be then applied after the kaleidoscope. And once it gets to the end of this chain, it's going to take whatever result it has, take it back up to the image compose and output that out of that texture output. So we basically have the, the, the crux of our effect here. And this is why I like this little preview window here, because I can kind of just like click through the, the network of nodes and see, okay, well, there's my webcam texture. I can click here and see the image compose is applying my kaleidoscope. I can click on the kaleidoscope's parameters. And even before I have my output set up ready, I can do things like play with the sides of it. Let's say I want a bunch of Elber's faces here, which is possibly my favorite thing. Uh, let's move some slide into the middle here. And you know, we can fully play with this and have a jolly good time before we've even gotten to setting up our output. So now when it comes to setting up our output, there's going to be a lot of different ways that we can do this. Thankfully, Cables GL has made it easy if you're working just with 2D applications or if you're working with 3D rendered environments, because remember, WebGL really is a 3D rendering environment. So when we're talking about putting 2D textures or effects onto that 3D environment, usually it ends up being putting a rectangle that is the size of the screen. Now, you could do this the manual way of making a rectangle that is the size of the screen, but if we go back to our op create dialog and look for full screen here, there is a really great node called a full screen rectangle. And what that's going to do is it basically just makes an automatically resizing rectangle that's going to fill the viewport and we can feed it a texture for what to display. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. And again, we can see that it's got a trigger to engage its rendering. So what I'll do is pull off of the image compose here. And then I know that I have to feed it a texture to actually display. And you can see once we plugged in this cable, we have our nice gray background here, which gray is pretty nice sometimes. But we can also take this output texture, plug it into this rectangle here, and we're going to see our content right here on screen. Now, a couple things before we kind of keep going with publishing this just for fun for our first example. Uh, if you do plug something in by accident and you want to disconnect a wire, really easy. All you have to do is hover over a wire and then right click on your mouse. That's going to delete that cable for you. The other thing is now that we're kind of seeing things coming into our viewport here, you can also come to the top right area, 
left click and get a bunch of viewport settings. So what we can do here is resize this viewport manually. So maybe I can make it something like 1280 by 720. Hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and fully resize that viewport and then resize my node editor to give me a 1280 by 720 canvas here. But what we can also do is even click on it and do things like this patch background one, which I like a lot, which sets the background of my patcher to be the actual output that I'm drawing to. So that can be fun, especially if you're coming from a touch designer background. Now, if I want to get out of this, what I can do is come down to the bottom right of the patcher here where there's a new little hovering element, which allows me to do things just like zoom my node network in and out and even center my node graph. But there's also a button to send the background patcher back into the actual top right area of the window here. So those can be fun things to play with. Now, the final thing we're even going to look at today is actually just how to quickly publish this so you can share it with your friends and even just try it inside of your browser. So what we can do is go up to this top left area here. We're going to open up our patch settings. And this is where we can go through first to give our project a name. So I'm going to call this the HQ video tutorial patch. You could go ahead and give it some tags separated by a comma. Let's do webcam example. Give it a description if you like. Set some kind of namespace or other keywords for filtering. We're going to go ahead and hit save on that. We can even go ahead and change what the preview image is. So right now it was set to a manual mode and you can toggle it between automatically trying to capture screenshots for its kind of preview image purposes or if you want to manually kind of trigger a screenshot and have that be a static screenshot. We can also come down to this visibility area and either, either we can make a secret URL. So if you're just sharing this for a client review or it's something you're working on with your team, generate the secret URL. In this case, I'm just going to hit this make patch public and it's going to give me a warning. Please choose the license. So I forgot to do that at the bottom. I can see at the bottom here, there's actually a really nice area where they just give you the ability to choose between and learn more about different licenses. This is really great, especially since this is a platform that really has a lot of sharing involved and people making cool things and sharing it. Depending on your comfort level, you can read more about these different kinds of licenses and pick out whichever one you're most comfortable with. For this example, I'm going to click public domain because there's no reason that everybody shouldn't have the simplest <laughs> webcam patch ever. So I can go ahead and hit make patch public now. That's going to give me a done. And now what I can do is close my patch settings. In this top left area here, I'm going to make sure to save it. And what we can see is if the title of the patch is in orange, that means it hasn't been saved for a minute. Let's make sure we save this patch. Then we can see the patch name becomes gray. That means it's all saved and ready for me to view. So I could either scan this QR code from my mobile to open it or even just go to this open a new window option. And it's going to go ahead and open this patch inside of a new window where I could even share this link with friends, colleagues, or any of those kind of folks and have them play it with this patcher. The nice thing is because I made this public, not only can people play with this, but if they come down to this area at the bottom here, there's a little open in editor button. So you could click this and then fully dive into somebody else's patch, what they've set up and kind of learn from that example as well. So I think this is a really, really interesting platform for people to explore. If you're interested in node based development, you've been working with something like touch designer, Maximus Pure notch, and you kind of want to take a little bit of a web spin on it. This is a really cool platform to check out. We'll be doing more cables, GLs videos in the future as well, just to kind of expand on not only how we can use cables GL, but how we can use it in conjunction with a platform like touch designer, Maximus P, Notch, Unreal, or any of these other kind of things. So hopefully you can dive in and enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.